All right, welcome back to Five Minute Game Reviews with me, Jesse. <laughs> with me, Jesse. Yeah, well, with me, Jesse. We're talking about a game that honestly deserves a lot of love for what it is and the price point that it's at. It's actually really good for for what it is. Today, we're talking about Spider-Man Miles Morales, a game as a true New Yorker speaks to my heart. Spider-Man is not the type of person who seems like he's here for the people. He seems like he's here to protect property, feeling like the police in some type of way. Miles Morales has that young, energetic vibe about him where he's rough, tumbling, and he's just from the streets. He's he is New York, it feels like. He is not your average Spider-Man superhero villain. He understands the struggle, especially after his dad just died in the original um, Spider-Man. Spider-Man Miles Morales takes place on the original Spider-Man map the for the PlayStation 4, which isn't bad. It's actually really good, and if you do play this on the PlayStation 5, it's a completely different experience, honestly. I played this on the original PlayStation 4 and I was completely let down. I did not like this game originally because it was very buggy and and just a hot mess. It didn't run it didn't run well on the PlayStation 4 by any means, but on the PlayStation 5, it's actually really really good. Zero load times, everything just runs super smooth and everything just works. No Hiccups, no glitching. Well, I'm not gonna say glitching. It's not a long game either. You can sit down and play this in a maximum of a day if you really want to. Getting through the whole platinum took me about three parts, three days of just gaming fun. And coming away from this, finishing this game on its platinum, I can truly say that it's it's worth the money, especially now that it's twenty dollars on the PlayStation Store. I'm blown away by how much they got Miles Morales right. And I am i don't really hate anything about this game. Except for maybe the playtime, I wish it was longer, but then again, they would charge it for $70. Spider-Man Miles Morales takes place right after the original Spider-Man for the PlayStation 4. Miles Morales is being taught by Spider-Man right now, and he is, he's just having the time of his life. Not even joking with you that this game starts off fantastic. I didn't think they could top the original Spider-Man and that opening of him just jumping out the window, but they honestly did it justice in this. You're not expecting some massive explosion, but they they gave it to you anyway. And seeing both Spider-Mans just going at it, saving the city, is just uh, just tingles, just tingles up and down. But after saving the city once and showing him the ropes and saying, "Hey, this is what you're doing. This is how life is," but and Miles Morales gaining a brand new power besides the just web-slinging, wall-crawling abilities that Spider-Man generically just has. Spider-Man says, hey, I'm going away in a couple of days and you're going to be the only Spider-Man. Miles Morales is now on his own to like, you know, save the city. He's all for it at the very beginning, but halfway through this story, as things are just being uncovered and the shit is being thrown at the fan, he is... He feels like he's way over his head, but as Spider-Man does, he somehow gets through it. He's just, he's just trying to stay alive at this point. And luckily he has a fantastic support group. The thing that got me about Peter Parker is that Peter Parker doesn't seem like he's here for the people. He seems like he's here to protect property and to stop bad guys from stealing a bunch of stuff and killing a bunch of people, and that's fine. But Peter, but Miles Morales feels like he's here for the people. Even the way he moves, talks, fights, swings, it's just, it's just this feeling of, hey, I'm this kid from the projects in Harlem, and I have freaking powers, like, let's go. Miles Morales is thrown into the fan. Not, not the fan doesn't come at him, he's thrown into the fan. Peter's gone, and there's just a new, there's a new, there's a new electric conglomerate on the block. Roxon. Roxy. Danic, Danicast? Danicast, right. It's Danicast. Danicast is just this lovable podcast who just praises Miles at every chance that he gets. 
Oh, he destroyed the building, but he stopped the bad guy. Yes, he freaking did. He's not here to just blow up the building. He was here to stop that evil organization from taking over the city. I love Dan and Cash. She gives him little tidbits and infos, giving him the support that he needs and the uplift to be like, look, Spider-Man, it's okay. We know it's hard. We've seen the other Spider-Man go through it. But maybe you can be the change that this city really needs and show everybody that it's not about just web swinging and defeating the enemy. It's about taking care of your fellow man. I love Dana Cash. She's just fantastic, especially when she, she dies, when she goes on Jay Jonah and like and argue with him. Like this man gets so upset. It's so funny, but whatever. Friends, this is the Dana Cash with our debate. That is that your intro? Lame! We in the business call that burying the lead. Hype it up! Let me ask you something, Danny. Do you ever think about what you're inciting? About your journalistic integrity? More than some. Because your campaign against Roxxon is baffling to an actual journalist like myself. You should be attacking the young, unproved vigilante who keeps causing problems in Harlem. You, you twist everything Spider-Man does into something malicious while simultaneously excusing everything Roxxon does wrong. All Spider-Man needs for you to support him is to get a better PR department. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. The only problem Spider-Man fixes are the ones he causes. I won't praise the arsonist for putting out his fire. Meanwhile, Roxxon built a beautiful plaza in a failing neighborhood. By tearing down homes and businesses, our new Spider-Man is proving that Harlem isn't the failure Roxxon makes it out to be. And you, Mr. Jameson, for someone who claims to love New York, you sure do seem to hate New Yorkers. You are clearly emotional, young lady, so I'm invoking the mercy rule on this debate. Jared, shut it down! And whose idea was it to debate a teenager? There are no good objects to destroying a child! Get the car! I need a hot stone massage! Hello? Hello? Roxxon is back on the scene. They are evil company hell-bent on violating every code in the book. Creating super soldiers from illegal organizations. It's just generic Spider-Man bad guy evil organization stuff. But on the side, we have the underground. Fun, lovable assholes of the block honestly there's a bunch of children running around thinking that they can bring the change that they want because you know we're children and we have super high-tech gadgets and the kingpin's not around and we're gonna take all of his money and cash and weapons and on connections and just do what we want to do at this point and just miles is just stuck in between and these two giant head-to-head -head come together and he's just Bridges are falling, buildings are being destroyed, and he's just like, do I want to be Spider-Man anymore? Let's talk about movesets. Spider-Man, Miles Morales' moveset is like the original Spider-Man. The original Spider-Man teaches him all of the basic movesets. Under tackle, web swinging people, throwing them against the wall, uppercutting them, hitting them in the air, doing a bunch of combos, executing people. Well, not executing people, but finishing people off. But then, Miles Morales gets his own moveset. I mean, you don't want to have him be exactly the same, right? No, 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 no. Venom powers. But not Venom, dark, evil Venom. No, 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 no. Bioelectric, shock absorbent Venom powers. Where you can just blast your enemies into the wall and just see them disintegrate in front of you. I don't think this power should be used on regular human miles, but you know what? It's a game and we'll allow it. We have a bunch of different abilities that we can use with, the, with these Venom powers. We have Venom Dash, Venom Punch, Venom Ground Slam, and Venom Rising. I don't know if these are the original names. These are what I'm calling it because they're my... They're way funner this way. Venom, da Venom Dash, jump at the farthest enemy, throw him against the wall. Venom Punch, super strong against shielded enemies except for the stupid rock song guys because they suck. Venom Ground Smash, best ability in the game. 
you're gonna use this like every chance you get and venom rising probably the hardest difficult ability to use in any video game because it requires specific timings that are so freaking annoying but whatever once you get it off it rises everybody into the air and then you can choose to ground slam into a finishing combo i am i love it i i love it <laughs> it's just it's just flashy and pure fun. We also have gadgets. You're never going to use any of these gadgets at any point in this game except to complete the stupid um, stupid uh, platinum trophy. We have the regular sprayer. You just shoot a bunch of webs and just stick people to walls. Then we have trap mine given to you by your uncle. Self-explanatory, place it against an electrical circuit. It explodes, taking out a bunch of bad guys. And we have the spider. It's just the robotic thing that flies around and shoots people. Pretty cool. We have holographic um, drones that can act as stand-ins, which honestly, if you use these correctly, can be super effective in fight. I never found them useful at any time. Venom powers all day. All freaking day. It only takes eight hours to beat, so if you do buy this at $19, it feels like just an additional DLC for the original Spider-Man, but just with an added flair to it. It's set Christmassy theme, and I'm, and I love it. And that's it for me, guys. And Happy New Year's to everybody. It's finally, for me right now, it's the third day of New Year's. This video will be uploaded on Thursday the 5th. So preemptive Happy New Year's to all of you. Last year was super fun with everything. I wasn't able to do everything that I wanted to do because of my work-life balance. I do work and my work generally takes up most of my time, especially with the commute. I do not have an at-home job. I don't have one of those. It's very much a out the house type of deal. And I'm, tr I'm going to try, my New Year's resolution this year is going to try to spread myself out. And I'm gonna try not to spread myself out too thin, but I hope to do more streaming content and create more content for you guys. So that's my New Year's resolution. And I hope to see you guys for the rest of this year. Thank you guys for all the support and love that you've given me. And I hope to see you guys every, well, every time I upload. Oh, make sure you do like and subscribe to make sure that this up video gets uploaded because we are sitting at a 98% non-subscribers to subscribers threshold right now. And it's I want to see that number get to at least 50% by the end of this year. So no pressure, no pressure. But I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys. Love you.